there's something about actors with the name Tom because they just love doing their own stunts. But while Tom Cruise is just an adrenaline junkie, Tom Holland is actually a trained acrobat and gymnast and even did a somersault in his Spider-Man audition to help him get the part, so it's no surprise that he's fine with doing his own stunts. In this video, we'll take a look at all of the different scenes Holland did himself, the risks involved in doing these stunts, and the crazy amount of work that went into pulling them off. Let's take a look. First off, the bat is probably one of the most impressive sequences in Spider-Man Homecoming, with Spidey having to scale the Washington Monument, a stunt that Holland actually did for real. Well, kind of. Real hush hush. While he could not actually climb the real Washington Monument in DC, he instead climbed up and even did flips off of a giant full wall with a slight pitch, with the actor wearing a motion capture suit and attached to via wires. When the stunts became impossible for even a trained acrobat like Holland to perform, that's when the digital team would set in, using Holland's movements as the foundation. So even when Spider-Man is CG, it is still Tom Holland and his moves at its core. As Tony Revolori stated, the lack of green screen and doing the physical stunts makes the end product feel much more realistic. And because most importantly, as the production team says, as Holland can do the flips and the acrobatics himself, he is already 95% Spider-Man, making him perfect for the role. Well, maybe. But we still need the funding. Seemingly unafraid of heights, Holland also climbed on top of the Staten Island ferry that the production team built, but the Washington Monument Wall is arguably more daunting. There were still some stunts that put Holland understandably on edge, such as the scene where Spidey is holding up the elevator using his webs. At first, Holland was a bit nervous about shooting the stunt, but the movie's stunt coordinator assured him that he didn't have to do it if he wasn't comfortable, but believed that he had the ability to do it. Eventually, Holland decided that he wanted to do the stunt for himself and managed to nail it. Another fun sequence that Holland performed for real in Homecoming is the scene where Spider-Man fights the Avengers at the bank. According to stuntman Chris Silcox, the stunt team had a big say in the way the sequence played out with him saying, quote, we put together this really fun bit of choreography for the ATM fight, which is the first fight in Homecoming with all the guys in the Avengers masks, end quote. This meant Holland was also greatly involved in the stunts, with him actually hanging upside down from the ceiling. Because, let's face it, you can't be Spider-Man if you can't hang upside down from the ceiling, come on. Moving on to the sequel, Far From Home Now, one of the most impressive sequences involving Night Monkey. Night Monkey? Yeah. I mean, Spider-Man is when he first goes up against the elementals on the streets of Venice. Now again, seeing as the production team couldn't actually trash the streets of Venice, the stunts were performed on a set with the city being recreated as a soundstage with a giant tank of water, but Holland did the stunts for real and provided some fancy footwork. For instance, the scene where he runs across a bunch of poles before leaping into a gondola, Holland actually pulled off the sequence himself with the help of some trusty wires. Holland even pulled off the moment that Peter pole vaults onto the bridge, although admittedly it was a lot slower in real time, but still very impressive. Also, the moment where Holland is covered in water was done for real, with the actor rigged to a ratchet to pull him back and slam him into a wall before thousands of gallons of freezing water was dumped on him, although it didn't work out on the first time of asking, meaning that they had to do it two times. Even Holland's co-star Jacob Batalon got into the action, with his gondola being blasted onto shore by the water. Although, his passing out scene in the movie is a little less impressive behind the scenes. Back to Homecoming now. Managing to shoot a scene with Michael Keaton as the villain? Yeah, that should count as a stunt in itself, seeing as how intense and awesome Keaton was in the movie, but Holland did actually perform the stunts in the final battle with Vulture for real as well. This meant that Holland spent most of the time being thrown around by wires, which may look kind of fun, but is actually extremely uncomfortable as things get rather squished, if you know what I mean. Now, let's be honest. It's most people's dreams to swing through the streets of New York City with Zendaya, and Holland actually got to fulfill this dream only to have it cut from the movie. I'm still listening. While appearing on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, Zendaya revealed that she and Holland participated in the stunt that had them drop over 100 feet, saying, quote, It was this big Spidey swing in New York. They attached a camera to Tom, and then they attached us together and lifted us to about 110 feet over boxes. 
end quote. Unsurprisingly, Zendaya was pretty proud that they both got to do the stunt, but the producers decided not to use the footage and instead recorded the stunt only two feet off the ground using wind machines to replicate the effect of swinging. At least the drop from two feet looked better, according to Zendaya anyway, and they will have the memories of plummeting 100 feet forever together. Keeping on with Far From Home, Jake Gyllenhaal was extremely impressed with Holland's work rate, saying that, quote, no one commits the physicality like he does. He's there with all the stunt crew and second unit doing as many of his stunts as he can. The actor was also extremely impressed by one of the first scenes he worked on with Holland, where he entered the scene by jumping on a trampoline and doing a backflip. Holland always seemingly wanted to do one more take. For instance, during the bus scene, where Peter distracts his classmates with mountain goats before jumping through the sunroof of the bus and blasting the drone with his webs. In regards to Far From Home as a whole, Holland said that he was pushed to the limit, but in the safest way possible, with the stunt team always making sure he was comfortable with the stunts he was taking part in. We mentioned one of Holland's favorite stunts earlier on, but another that Holland loved was the suburb scene where Spider-Man crashes through a fence, which totally gives me some hot fuzz vibes. Because the wires prevented them from doing the sequence in one motion, to record this scene, Holland was actually located in a box hidden in the shed, while it was his stuntman that was the one to crash through the roof. After the stuntman goes through the roof, Holland's the one that runs out of the wreckage and eventually plows through the fence, which, to be honest, does look like a load of fun. Although I imagine that a lot of fences were harmed while making this movie. Hmm, sad. I know, this is a video on Spider-Man stunts, but I'm actually going to move away from Spider-Man now and onto a movie that hasn't even come out yet. Don't do anything. Don't say anything. Okay. Holland is still keeping up his acrobatic aerial stunts for movies outside of the MCU, with the upcoming Uncharted movie making sure to use the best of Holland's abilities. Holland said that the action sequences in Uncharted are some of the biggest that he's ever been a part of, but this admittedly took a grueling toll on his body, saying that I was getting so beat. I was battered and bruised and I had tendonitis in my hamstring. I will never do a sword fight scene ever again. End quote. Holland went even further with this, saying, The action sequences in Uncharted are some of the biggest action sequences I've ever been a part of. The cuts and bruises and bangs I got from dangling off of wires and falling off of things was ridiculous. End quote. With Holland doing his own stunts, the movie has him scaling a 30-foot mast of a ship, the aforementioned sword fight which led Holland to get hit in the face with Mark Wahlberg's sword, and that's not an innuendo, get your head out of the gutter, you dirty dogs, and the cargo plane sequence taken straight out of the video game. You would think that after this movie, Holland would need a nice break, but he apparently only had three days of rest before having to go off and film Spider-Man No Way Home. I would feel bad for him, but I mean, he makes a lot more money than me, so I don't feel too guilty. So here I am. Finally, before we go, Holland has broken his nose twice while shooting a movie. The first time he broke his nose was on the last day of shooting the movie Lost City of Z, while the second time came when he was punched, presumably by accident, by a stuntman during the first week of filming Chaos Walking. It's over.